Hey everyone, Reflected here. And today, I'd like to show you how to be more confident behind the tanker in DCS and plug every time you try. Looking at YouTube videos and also campaign feedback, I see a lot of people struggling with it. And even though everybody aspires to be a virtual naval aviator and ask for study level campaigns, many downright refuse the idea that they'd have to refuel during these missions. This is funny because real life naval aviators have nearly as many plugs as carrier landings probably. It's such a fundamental part of their life. It may seem daunting at first, hey, it is daunting and stressful in real life too, I'm sure. But if you follow these steps, you'll realize that you can do it too. Before I begin, let me tell you that I'm recording this video looking at a 15 inch laptop screen. It's much easier on a large screen and especially in VR where you have a 3D sense of depth. So if I can do it on this setup, so can you on yours. So how do you accomplish a seemingly impossible task? Well, how do you put an elephant into a fridge? You cut it into small pieces of course. Just like in my case one recovery tutorial, today I'll explain some checkpoints that you need to pass one by one. And if you do, the actual plugging will be easy. So the first step, where most people fail, is when they charge at the tanker in full blower and try to plug. No! Rejoin on the tanker's left wing with a 50 knot closure maximum. Then try to fly a steady formation. Tanker speeds should be somewhere between 250 and 300 knots indicated. At this point, you have two objectives to accomplish. One establish a throttle baseline. Check how much power you need in order to stay in formation. Also check how much you need to modulate the throttles in order to move forward or aft relative to the tanker. It's usually much less than people think. Take note of these and remember when you're behind the basket. Number two is to trim the jet perfectly. You don't want to have to apply constant pressure on the stick either way. If you can't accomplish this and fly a stable form of the tanker, don't even try to move on. Once it's done comes step 2, the in-flight refueling checklist. WCS switch standby, so the Rio has to turn the AUG-9 radar to standby. Arming switches safe, the tanker pilot will thank you for it. Dump switch off. No point in getting fuel while you're dumping it simultaneously. Air source, left engine. It's quite possible that fuel will get into the air and then it will be sucked right down the right engine intake. If it happens, you don't want it to enter the cockpit through the ECS. Refuel probe, extend. Transition light off. Wing sweep, manual just in case anything goes wrong with the automatic computer. Sweep angle as desired. Some people swear by using bomb mode, but it's a bit of a myth and it's not necessary. Yes, it makes the jet slightly more stable in the pitch axis and gives you a higher AOA creating more drag allowing you to use more power where the throttle is more responsive. But if the tanker is slow or high, 20 degrees is actually better. You can also put the flaps to maneuver if you like. Use what works best for you. Visors recommended down. Once that's complete, the tanker pilot signals you to clear you in. In real life, tanking is zip lip. The radio is not used, only hand signals. But in DCS, we always have to use the tanker radio menu. The next step is to fall back behind the tanker and stabilize just behind the basket, around 5 to 10 feet. Zoom out if you're flying in 2D. You have a better sense of relative motion that way. Also, move your head around so you can see both the basket and the tanker. It's not always easy on a 2D screen. At this point, 
you need to split all controls in your head, kind of uncoordinate them. Think about each separately. We've already talked about the throttle. You have a good baseline and a good idea about how much you need to modulate them to move forward and aft. Careful, the engines need time to spool up and down. People add a little power and don't see any effect immediately, especially on a 2D screen, so they add more and more and by the time they see the effect it's too much. They panic and cut the throttle, which lags of course, so by the time they wake up they slow down too much and so on. Move the throttles only a little bit and be patient. Also, remember, it's a three-step movement, much like when you're in the groove behind the boat. Say, you want to move forward. If you just add power, then you just keep accelerating and crash into the tanker. So once you have the desired closure speed, around 5 knots, not more, you decrease the throttle to stop approaching the tanker, then before you slow down to the tanker speed again, you increase the power again to the established baseline. Same when you want to go further back. Lateral stick movement is only used to keep your wings parallel to the tankers. That's it. Don't use it for anything else. Forget about the horizon. All that matters is that your wings are parallel to the tankers. I find it's a lot like flying a glider behind the tow plane, if you ever tried that. If you want to move left and right, use a little bit of rudder, just a touch, while keeping the wings parallel to the tankers with the stick. Very gentle movements. Up and down is controlled by the elevators, of course, but be very gentle. This is one of the hardest parts, I think. People are prone to over control and get into a PIO, pilot induced oscillation. Say, you're too low, you pull back on the stick, realize it's too much, you push down, over control, and then it becomes a vicious cycle. If you recognize an oscillation, don't fight it, that's the secret. That only makes things worse. Relax and try to stop it at one of the extremities. Stabilize there, then gently work your way back from there. If you mess up, don't try to force it in, don't try to salvage a bad situation. Gently back off just a little bit, stabilize, and then try again. The secret is to not look at the basket. Look at the tanker. The basket should only be in your peripheral vision. This is not easy on a 2D screen, especially if it's a 15 inch laptop. The canopy bars are going to block most of it, so move your virtual head until you see enough of the tanker. At first, don't even try to plug, just fly behind the basket. Only when you can fly a stable formation behind the tanker, with the probe 5 feet from the basket, can you go ahead and try to plug. At this point, if you've done everything right, it should be a piece of cake. Add a smidge of power, a gentle closure, a few knots and that's it. Only at the last moment should you actually look at the basket. Contact. When you plug, drive it forward a little bit, Here's not too much. Remember, you'll need to decrease power below the baseline to stop the closure, then back to baseline to prevent getting further aft and unplugging. Then just keep flying formation of the tanker, stop looking at the basket. When you're done, decrease power just a little bit and retract the refueling probe and form up on the tanker's right wing while your buddies tank. Don't forget to switch the air source back to both and the wing sweep back to auto. That's it. If you go step by step, this method will work at night too. But of course, the single biggest secret of getting good at anything is practice. Tanking, landing, piano, Rubik's cube, anything. If you do it enough times, you'll get good, simple as that. It's a perishable skill too, so make sure you do it regularly. Okay, I hope you managed to learn something new and it will help you plug more consistently. I'm just a flight sim nerd who has never done it in real life. But keep an eye out for my Speed and Angels campaign where Paco, a real life Tomcat pilot, will teach you real time how to plug both day and night with much more detailed and authentic advice. Now, off you go, practice. No more excuses. I don't want to hear about skippable tanking in study level missions ever again. Make sure you subscribe for more tutorials and campaign updates. See ya!